Chapter 7, Beginnings, Part 1. Here we go. Rava. 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 A dark energy has infected her. We must purge it before it destroys her avatar spirit. Let the waters cleanse the darkness that plagues your spirit. This is beautiful. Who are you? I am you. Who am I? You are the Avatar. Return to the beginning. Find Rava. Wow. I love this. It's so beautiful. Are you Rava? No. But I can help you find her. My name is Juan, and I will show you how I became the first Avatar. Wow. This is awesome. So this is like a journey back through Avatar history. Okay. You guys probably know that for a long time I've, I wouldn't say I've had an issue with the Avatar, but I would say I, I felt like it's incomplete and I feel like it's something that's missing narratively. Like it's just something that exists and that's okay. You know, we can accept that. But I think that sometimes when relating these shows to real life, the Avatar is kind of like a monkey wrench in that because it's just something that I can't really reckon with in terms of like, what is the Avatar for us? So it would be amazing for me if they can actually connect this to something thematically. Does that make sense? Nobody steals from the two brothers! Really? Because I just did. You're dead, Juan. Actually, I feel quite alive. <laughs> okay, Aladdin. One jump ahead of the hitman. That literally happens in Aladdin. I love it. I think I'll take a stroll around the block. <laughs> Can I just say this art style is amazing? So much beautiful detail in this episode so far. The spirit world was beautiful looking, and this is a whole new art style that works really well. Wow. I got some food for you. Mmm, delicious! See, a half tree? You should eat. Eh, they need it more than I do. If only there was some way to get into the Chew's food cellar, we'd be eating like, well, like Chew's. You'll end up dead. Or worse, he'll banish you to the spirit wilds. Spirit wilds. You don't want nothing to do with those spirits. They'll get inside you, scramble up your mind, turn you into this a monster. Don't be so hard on yourself. You just gotta accept the world is the way it is. Some people have power, some people don't. And you don't. Not yet anyway. So a lot of development for one already. First, his Aladdin-ness, which is really great. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Aladdin, and I think one of the things that makes this kind of character so so appealing, by starting out a story with him evading capture, it shows cunning. And that oftentimes would be a bad thing, right? Like, thievery is not ideal. But then they quickly balance that out with him giving and being kind. So it shows it's not malice, it's not selfishness. And also for one, we see a connection with nature. It is like this diamond in the rough thing, right? Like this chosen one. He has all these abilities. He's obviously someone of importance, but but born into this low class. And that's a really, really intriguing and compelling juxtaposition. Join the hunt! Count me in. You wouldn't last two seconds. I, I mean, we've seen that he's an incredible myself. athlete. Yeah. We all get fire, right? Fire. Is that what I think it is? It is! How I've missed you. Wow. Grant us the power of fire. The power is yours to keep until your return. Hmm. So there are no benders. They were just given temporary powers. I think I want to go home. Go give your fire back to the lion turtle. And don't ever show your face around me again. What's he up to? Juan, you're back. He took the fire. <gasps> you can't steal from the lion turtle. I just did. Uh-oh. It's time to stop being so afraid of the chews. And show them we have the power to change things. You're powerless. Powerless, huh? That's a pretty good firebender already. No, please! Have mercy! One? Even when you have the power, you're afraid to use it. He just saved your life, man. Or spared your life. Tell me who else was involved in the rebellion. I love the lion turtle. You are hereby banished! I need to be able to protect myself in the wilds. I will allow you to keep the power of the element. Hmm. Well, the Avatar is the connection between the human world and the spirit world, right? Watch where you're stepping, human! How'd you like it if I started walking all over you? 
You're just a little frog. Whose little mouth? <laughs> This is so well done. It's really interesting watching this after having just read the comic The Rift, because here we see the humans are just so overpowered and helpless compared to the spirit world. In The Rift, we, we see a great spirit admit that their time is over and that it's humans' time to dominate or to create, as, as they say in the comic. There was a point at which humans were just vulnerable creatures in the wild, and we're still vulnerable, but we definitely don't fear nature. We don't fear the wild or the great spirits like we had to in the past. This episode so far does such a great job conveying that atmosphere of like humans alone. It comes across really well. You sure about that? I see he went to the boomy school of descending cliffs. You are not welcome in my oasis, human. Studio Ghibli vibes continue. And who might you be? I am Bushy, the Bush Spirit. The story checks out. I knew I smelled a human. Come on, let me in. If you can't go back to your city, then you should go live in another one. There are other lion turtles? I'll find it myself. Good luck. <laughs> that animals are dinner. Now get out of the way. No. Yeah, now he knows the forest. <laughs> I really hate humans. Oh no, he's stuck like that. Oh, that's terrible. I don't know what he's screaming about. He's better looking now. <laughs> The old man wasn't lying about them getting in inside of you. What's in this water? It has special healing properties. Is that the same water Cora's in? Thanks for saving my neck. But why'd you do it? I saw you save the cat deer from those hunters. You're the carrot dude. Speaking of dinner, I love these designs. They're so cool. You guys will get along great in here. I decided to stay here and learn the ways of the spirits. Yeah, as long as they don't try to kill me every five seconds. I guess we can try it. I've never had a human as a pet before. <laughs> oh, no. I think I'll call you Stinky. <laughs> There's a firebender with a dragon. It seems like there are a little, there's couple little details that imply that he's the beginner, beginning of the fire family, like the fire lords, right? Am I imagining that? His clothes, his overall appearance, and obviously fire. And the dragon. We don't have to live under Chu the Elder's rules anymore. So I say we leave this city and start over. Who's with me? Oh, the music. It's time I see the rest of the world and find the other lion turtle cities. Are the other lion turtle cities other elements? The all powerful spirits are battling! Stop! Or you'll destroy everything! This doesn't concern you, human! It does when the lives of spirits and animals are in danger! Wow, look at them. They look amazing. You're a friend to spirits. Save me. She has tormented me for 10,000 years. Wow. 10,000 years? Let him go! Ooh, you just involved yourself in things you know nothing about, human. You don't know what you're doing at all. You just see two people fighting. Thank you, human. You have performed a great service for the spirits. Do you realize what, he just what do? you've done? No, he yeah. doesn't. You are gravely mistaken. You don't know. I was yeah. keeping him under control. Right. My name is Rava. Rava. That spirit you freed is Vatu. He is the force of darkness and chaos. I am the force of light and peace. Since the beginning of time, we have battled over the fate of this world. And for the past 10,000 years, I have kept darkness under control until you came along. So, <laughs> by freeing Vatu, I let chaos into the world? Rava and 
what is it called? Batu? They're so amazing looking. This is a beautiful representation of an old idea that the two forces in the world are order and chaos. Neither one of them is good or bad. Order gives you safety, gives you peace, as Rava said. Chaos is destruction and death, but thematically death is not always a bad thing. Like in tarot, death often means rebirth, newness. I love the chaos and order thing because it works in so many levels. You know, it works as a universal concept. It works in life, right? Like in our lives, we should strive, I think, for a balance between chaos and order. Chaos is potential. Chaos is what shakes you out of the mundane. You need to have some creativity, some risk to keep you alive. I love that they're covering this in the show because I was so focused on this at a surface level so far with the battle between tradition and innovation. I didn't realize how deeply they were thinking about this. This takes it to such a interesting soul level of cosmic forces and eternal struggle, which we can kind of taste, right? Like we're on the tip of that struggle. This goes deeper than I think I can comprehend. Precisely. The human and spirit realms are headed toward annihilation and it's all your fault. Rava, I found you. Wow, so I was expecting a great episode. I was not expecting that. That was totally different than, than anything we've seen in the show so far. I'm now okay with the amnesia as a thing. What a beautiful and special episode. I also think it's interesting that in the beginning of this episode, his friend, whose name I forget, said, there's something you can do. Some people have power, some people don't. And Juan said, we'll see about that or something like that, right? My instinct at that time was that that's kind of arrogant. And interestingly, that was foreshadowing for what he did at the end there, which is that he decided to imbalance things, to make a binary decision like that. When their battle is 10,000 or more years old, you're going to create chaos inevitably. Going back to the multiple layers, balance in society and balance in the universe, society is a natural system and disrupting elements of society carry similar risks to disrupting elements in nature. We know pretty well that what you don't want to do is go in and remove species to try to save another species, right? Because what ends up happening a lot of the time is that destroys a lot of species. Because what you're seeing is the result of millions of years of natural tinkering to get to a point. So what you're seeing, although it looks chaotic, is in some ways the most natural and orderly state. It really is two halves of the same coin. And society is similar, right? We see things that we don't like. Our instinct is to fix it. But I think that just like there are systemic risks in nature, there are systemic risks in society, whereby applying top-down force to like rip something away or create something out of nothing, you risk creating vacuums just like in nature that destabilize everything. And so like, it's good to have a healthy respect for society, just like we should have a healthy respect for nature, which doesn't mean we shouldn't aim to improve things or make things better. It just means we we have to be careful how we do them, which is why I think it's often more useful to look at it in terms of making micro actions at a local level, like you yourself being better, right? Than like top down major systemic overhaul, which create a sinkhole for all the related things that are interconnected with it. I should probably go to the next episode. <laughs> I'm gonna be here all day, <laughs> just on episode 7. I'm gonna watch episode 8 right now. I couldn't not watch it if I tried, but for logistical reasons, mainly editing, this is gonna be the end of this video, but I will see you tomorrow for episode 8. So I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs>